Welcome back to The Shift on CKNW News Talk 980. My name is Mike Eckford. And, well, uh, I have watched certainly over the last decade or so through my uh, broadcasting career this film festival grow. It's now the second largest in Vancouver. It is the largest uh, queer film festival in Western Canada. It is the 26th annual Vancouver Queer Film Festival. And, again, they've done such an incredible job of drawing so many different topic matters, styles of film together that represent uh, a global viewpoint as well. We are very happy to be joined by the Director of Festival Programming for the Queer Film Festival, uh, Shana Miara. How are you, Shana? Hi, I'm great. Thanks so much, Mike. Uh, thank you for joining us. Boy, 26 years, uh, <laughs> that, that's an incredible achievement for, I think, probably any artistic organization. How has it changed over those years? Oh, well, thanks. We do see it as an achievement, and things have changed greatly over 26 years. I mean, uh, in the early days, Out on Screen started um, in the living room of some people in the West End who thought that we should have a cultural component to the gay games that were coming to Vancouver. So it really started by a group of um, people who just had a lot of love and really wanted to make sure that the community at large was represented on screen. And uh, since then, we've grown and grown and grown, and so has queer cinema in general. And uh, here we are 26 years later. Yeah, that was one of the things that I wanted to talk about is, is the change in uh, both the storytelling style, but also, you know, it's an interesting um, sort of placeholder for how we've progressed as a society in understanding uh, different cultures, the LGBT community, uh, and, and different parts of the world as well. Mm -hmm, exactly. You can um, you can see it in what the stories have been telling over the years. So we remember it as well as festival organizers, and uh, many of our early organizers are still involved in the organization. But also, we can look back to our program of films, our selection of films over the years, and we see how the stories have changed um, along with the times. Uh, the festival runs August fourteenth all the way through to the 24th, and I wanted to highlight a couple of films that you're bringing because, uh, you know, of course, uh, great strides have been made, thankfully, in North America and in, in many countries around the world. Unfortunately, we cannot count Russia as one of those countries where progress has been made for the LGBT community. You have a film uh, coming out of Russia that's absolutely fascinating, Children 404. Tell us a little bit about this. Mm. Children 404 is a remarkable documentary. It was um, it was made really at high personal risk by the filmmakers, uh, and it chronicles um, a website that a, uh, the Russian activist created um, after the Russian government passed this anti-gay propaganda law last year, um, and the response on the ground was enormous. The um, the weight of the Russian state was essentially pressed against a minority group in their own country, uh, really trying to distract discussion that was happening internationally around, you know, corruption in the country and the incredible expenses and corruption that were happening in the lead-up to the Sochi Games. So really a minority group, the LGBT community, were, were chose to be scapegoats for some of that. And um, in Children 404, we see what life is like for teenagers um, in, in Moscow today. Um, the, the film opens with um, one of the teenagers that is being profiled wearing one of those GoPro cameras, and we see what happens when he enters his school ground. He is bullied and taunted and called all sorts of horrible names, and you know we have to realize that that is now state-sanctioned, saying, saying the opposite, it's okay to be gay, is now illegal in Russia. Right, so, because people don't understand that the word propaganda also covers education. Uh, right. so, so kids can't be told in school, you know, who you are and how you feel is okay. You know, it's accept it's who you are, that's all right. That, can't, mm -hmm. that, can, that message can't make it to kids. That message is now illegal. And that, that film was almost shut down. The courageous folks at the St. Petersburg Film Festival showed it, and the police showed up to try and try and stop its dissemination. Um, so when I say the filmmakers made it at great personal risk, I mean, they're, currently they're awaiting the verdict as to whether they will be fined or, um, or worse for, for violating that law, for making the film. Now, I know so we have the filmmaker coming to town, actually. Askold Kirov is the co-director, and he'll be with us on August 21st when we show the film at the Vancouver Playhouse. I was, we'll hear more from him. That's exactly what I was going to ask, because from my understanding, you guys have been waiting as his legal case has made its way through the courts in Russia uh, to find out whether he would be in attendance or not. 
Mm-hmm, that's right. Um, as far as I know, he he will be coming. Um, he's he's waiting the decision. I believe it's now resting in the hands of the Russian Ministry of Culture. Um, his uh, the person that he profiled in the film, Elena, who started the website Children 404 as a, a safe haven for teens to go and and talk to each other anonymously, um, to have an outlet if they didn't have any outlet on the ground in their own communities. Um, she is also awaiting trial. Um. It, it's an interesting, because you said, you know, a lot of it is, uh, you know, there's some GoPro footage from a young person and, and what they face every day when they go to school. And and one of the initiatives of the uh, Queer Film Festival and out on screen has been to go out into schools and out into communities and, and present these films to, you know, younger audiences and kids in school as well. Uh, so, you know, it's an interesting sort of uh, a layer, I guess, on the presentation of this film as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this isn't um, one of the films that we would take into the schools, although it is a great learning tool. Uh, the films that we select for taking into schools are usually geared towards a younger audience, um, but yes, generally around the message of acceptance and understanding across differences. And, you know, that is, that's the power of film and cinema, that you can come and sit and maybe experience something that you haven't had a chance even to think about or encounter before. Uh, one of the other ones that I wanted to talk about, I was reading the Georgia Strait, and uh, and they profiled the dog. Uh, this film is called, and uh, people might recognize the name John the Dog uh, Wojowicz. Tell us a little bit about this uh, documentary film. Right. Well, it's a it's a great documentary. Uh, IndieWire called it one of the best documentaries of the year, and it is it's about the dog, um, and people will probably know of him through the film Dog Day Afternoon, uh, Al where Al Pacino played. <laughs> The dog. So, um, so this documentary is about the man who inspired that film, who uh, is quite a character in the LGBT uh, history. He he robbed a bank in Manhattan um, for his lover's gender reassignment surgery. He was very candid about that fact. He's quite a, a bold, outspoken, you know, charismatic actually character. Yeah. And uh, the filmmakers got to spend all this time with him, and we learned more and more about that time period, um, his mindset. Um, it, you know, at the time, it was actually a very tragic tale because his his partner in crime was killed in all of this. But um, the media coverage really portrayed it as a a very laughable story, uh, even though they they did take hostages, and it was a it was a very serious case where the I think the National Guard even came out. Uh, it sounds fascinating. Uh, tell us about some of the other on the schedule, because one I want to get across to people as well is the breadth of styles of filmmaking. I mean, you guys really run the gambit from, you know, very serious documentaries uh, to, uh, you know, very uh, dramatic films to a lot of humor as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we try to um, really bring a little bit of everything for everyone to the festival. So sometimes you just want a night out, for a, night, a date night out, let's say. Um, and sometimes you really want to be educated and, and, um, and learn from cinema and what's happening in the world. Well, we have a couple of films that people, I think, might be surprised that we have in the festival. We have one film that was executive produced by Robert Redford, uh, and it premiered at the Sundance Film Festival called Drunk Town's Finest. And that is a film about a transgender woman on a Navajo reservation in New Mexico. And it's really, it's actually an ensemble cast and uh, a really beautifully rendered film about a town that maybe many people only knew about because of an ABC 2020 story that labeled the town Drunk Town USA. Right. So this film is really a beautiful rebuttal to that and, um, you know, boasts the support of Robert Redford. So it comes with one of the highest of pedigrees peels away the layers of, uh, you know, one of those things that gets spun in the mainstream media and sticks, right? I mean, that stuff has an effect uh, as well. So, Well, exactly. And on the town, I think it was, it was really affecting. So it's lovely that this film is getting the attention it deserves. Uh, how do people get tickets? How, how does it work in, in theaters, etc.? How does it work? Well, um, probably the best thing to do is check out our website, queerfilmfestival.ca. Uh, from there, you can buy tickets and be directed to the rest of our schedule. Uh, tonight, we're heading over to the SFU Gold Corp Theater and to International Village Cinemas, and we're running straight through until August 24th. Well, uh, I'm really happy for everyone there that's worked so hard with this organization uh, to continue adding so much to the fabric of Vancouver. The 26th Vancouver Queer Film Festival runs from August 14th all the way until August the 24th. Shanna, thank you very much. 
Thank you, Mike. What a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. It was a ton of fun. Shana Miara is the director of festival programming for the Queer Film Festival. Once again, you go to queerfilmfestival.ca for all your ticket information, and you can watch a lot of the trailers for the movies and uh, pick and choose. And it's either a date night or a learning experience, or it's anything you want it to be. Uh, but this is a uh, again just a great part of the city. We're going to take a break and come back with more on the shift on CKNW News Talk nine eighty.